on the uh, beef and pork, please? I think the PM has commented about it. It's a positive step. So after nearly four months of suspended trade, China has resumed its imports of Canadian beef and pork. Shipments were halted in June over an issue involving a forged export certificate, all of which escalated a dispute between Canada and China that began last year. That's when Canada arrested Huawei executive Meng Wanzhou at the request of U.S. authorities. Now, today's news is obviously huge relief for Canadian meat producers, but a ban continues on Canadian canola imports, and two Canadians are still detained in China. So, how significant is this development. Guy Saint-Jacques served as Canada's ambassador to China from 2012 to 2016. He's now senior fellow at the University of Alberta's China Institute and he joins us from Montreal via Skype. Ambassador, welcome back to the show. Uh, does this decision today come as a surprise to you? No, uh, not much because in fact I was meeting with uh, uh, people in the industry yesterday and I was telling them that uh, uh, China would come uh, back very soon. Uh, and the reason I, I say this is that the impact of the African swine flu has been very severe, much more than what was anticipated by the Chinese leadership. The, uh, the flu is, has now spread to 32 provinces in China, so most of, the, of China has been uh, affected by this. They may have lost up to 40% of their herd, so that would translate in about 100 million pigs, which means that they have lost 40% uh, of their production. And when you know that uh, pork is the main source of protein for Chinese consumers. Uh, this had a huge impact on prices uh, that have gone up by uh, 70 to 100 percent. And the, there was so much pressure from the uh, Chinese consumers that the government had to act. They tried to get as much pork as they could from uh, Brazil and Europe, but the door sources are, are gone. Uh, and therefore, it was just a matter of time that the they would have to set aside their uh, political views and uh, resume importing of uh, Canadian, uh, Canadian pork. Okay, so while this is good news then for pork producers and beef producers, this is really an act of necessity by China rather than a gesture of goodwill. Yeah, I would say so. And on canola, in fact, uh, the situation is difficult, of course, but uh, if you uh, have listened to comments by Brian Ellis of the Canola Council, uh, we, we are still exporting canola, but only about 25% of what we were exporting last year. Uh, and the, the reason is that the smaller uh, shippers that can meet this 1% uh, uh, or less uh, dockage uh, standard established by the Chinese, that, that's the way they measure impurities in the shipments. So these companies have continued to be able to, to export, but uh, overall, uh, the impact has been very severe for Canadian producers. The price of canola has dropped by about 10%, which translates in about uh, <clears throat> a loss of uh, $1 billion. Uh, but uh, in terms of the overall relationship, uh, you know, we still have to brace ourselves possibly for more uh, turbulence. Okay, because people see this and they take it as a sign that maybe things are getting better. We have an ambassador there now, Dominic Barton. They've accepted his credentials. They've opened up the door for, for beef and pork. Uh, but, but it sounds like you don't think things have actually improved all that much. Uh, not really. And uh, in fact, we, we have been warned uh, by the Chinese. They, they have said that if we don't return Mrs. Meng, the, the relationship won't get back uh, to normal. The, the other thing that uh, I would add is that uh, there, are, there are still p potential problems down the road in as much as the federal government has to make a decision on whether Huawei will be allowed to participate in uh, 5G development in Canada. And again, China has been clear, if the, the company is not allowed, there will be further me measures taken, uh, taken against Canada. In the case of Michael Kovic and Michael Sp uh, Spaver, they have been formally arrested. Uh, they have not been formally charged yet, and that's an important distinction because in China, once you are formally charged, the judiciary process will take about uh, 18 months before you are condemned, and you are almost certain to be condemned uh, in as much as 99.9% .9 of the people are found uh, guilty. And the reason there may be that China is trying to buy some time, hoping that the miracle will happen, that maybe, and that by miracle, I mean that uh, the Huawei uh, problem would be resolved as part of a comprehensive trade agreement between uh, the U.S. and uh, China. 
Okay, so we've seen reaction from the Canadian Meat Council. They thank the Prime Minister, the Agriculture Minister, Marie-Claude Bibo. They thank Jim Kerr. Uh, we have an ambassador there now, as I said, Dominic Barton is there. Did politics make any, have any kind of a role in this? Did the new ambassador make any kind of a difference? Or is this strictly swine flu and swine flu alone? Well, I would say, of course, it's very important to have uh, ambassadors in place. And uh, when Mrs. Frieden met with uh, Minister Wang Yi uh, back uh, at the uh, ASEAN summit at the end of June, they agreed on a process. So, yes, it's important to have an ambassador. In this case, though, I would say it, it turned out to be simply a question of necessity for China. Uh, they needed uh, our port because prices were uh, getting too expensive for Chinese consumers. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, it's a, a little unfreezing in the relationship. This being said, I've heard that there is a, a debate going on in Beijing because some uh, members of uh, the party are uh, saying that uh, Xi Jinping went too far in terms of the measures he took against Canada. Many people perceive Canada as a, an old friend of China. A little gesture that uh, uh, was made uh, around uh, the uh, uh, 70th uh, uh, anniversary of the People's Republic of China on October 1st is the, the fact that President Xi Jinping gave the Medal of Freedom to an old Canadian who has lived uh, most of her life in China, Isabel Crook. The Medal of Freedom is the highest decoration that a foreigner can receive in China. And the fact that President Xi gave it to her, I think, was a little gesture towards uh, Canada. Okay, so given this debate and given this medal award, the debate you're hearing that's happening in Beijing, what are you looking for next on China-Canada relations? What, what, should, what we should, be, should we be paying attention to? Well, uh, two things. Uh, basically, first, uh, a decision on Huawei, and I suspect this will have to be made uh, uh, soon after the new uh, cabinet has been sworn in because our tele telecommunication companies want to have some clarity. The second is the situation in Hong Kong because, of course, if things were to deteriorate uh, further and if something dramatic uh, were to take place, I think, you know, we would have to, to discuss uh, sanction. So I think, you know, Canada does not have much leeway in trying to resolve this issue. And I think that's why we have to continue to work with allies to try to get as much support uh, as we can. I expect and I hope that President Macron of, uh, of France will raise this issue when he meets with President Xi Jinping. He is right now visiting China. Uh, we, but also, I think we have to, to work with allies to try to reinforce the multilateral system. And the message to China should be, we welcome you to participate in, uh, uh, in international affairs and have a larger role. But at the same time, we expect you to play by the rules. The rules should apply to everyone. And no country should be subject to the kind of uh, uh, measures that you have taken against Canada after the arrest of Mrs. Wang. Okay, sir, we'll leave it there. Thank you for your time. That's former ambassador to China, Guy Saint-Jacques. Thank you. Okay, so that's Guy Saint-Jacques, Canada's former ambassador to China, explaining to us why he thinks China is importing Canadian pork and beef once again. We're back with the power panel, Jason, Tiffany, Melissa, and Francoise. So, Tiffany, I'd like to start with you. When we saw this news today, our initial reaction was, hey, maybe things are getting better between Canada and China, but it turns out they're just running out of pigs. Uh, <laughs> What's your reaction well, to this news? I don't know that it can. It necessarily needs to be one or the other. Uh, it could uh, mean and, and signal a turning of uh, a new chapter to our uh, the progress of uh, the, the relations at this point. Uh, we know that uh, Dominic LeBlanc has, has met with the detainees, the Canadian detainees, and I think there's a, a sort of a, a movement to uh, some of our, our relational uh, work at this point. And so um, a step in the right direction, uh, All what all of the factors were and, and uh, how much of this was just necessity. Um, I guess we'll, uh, it'll be hard to tell, um, but uh, but would say at minimum really good to see that there's there's a, there's a step a positive step taking place forward for at minimum the uh, the industries uh, impacted on a Canadian uh, standpoint. Right. So Melissa, this is a positive uh, step forward certainly for the industry, uh, as Tiffany says. Dominic Barton is there. He's been accepted as Canada's ambassador to China. Uh, how does the government now in this minority situation need to approach this? You said last segment is going to be more inward looking. 
It's hard to ignore China, right? So what are they going to do? Certainly hard to ignore China, and I don't see the government sort of running a victory lap on saying things are getting much better with China, and I frankly haven't seen industry line up and say thank you, Canadian government. Uh, and while it is a positive step in the in the right direction, I think you have those in the sort of canola uh, industry wondering, hey, is this actually a thing? Uh, you know, is there a chance to get uh, the, the ban lifted on canola? And what are the next steps in the uh, in the China um, in the China relationship? Look, there's a hundred million dollars that were lost. Uh, in the months of, uh, of, the, of the ban. So there's a big explanation as to why that happened and if the government did anything to, uh, to make it better. And I think that there is uh, overall this, uh, you know, U.S. talk of a U.S. trade deal uh, that might loom over this and, and might become more clear as to, as to why this happened uh, and what's at stake. In terms of the government looking outwards, uh, look, I think they still need a strong uh, foreign minister, but in a minority government, and this happens all the time, I w- worked for a foreign affairs minister in a minority government, you're looking at your electoral chances uh, in Canada. You're looking at maintaining confidence in the House. You're looking at coalition building or, uh, you know, dancing with partners to pass legislation to make sure that you get to that next step and you can uh, you can either win or you decide that uh, that you've had enough and you call an election. So, Jason, canola is still unresolved. Uh, the two Michaels is still detained in China. And, and an issue that kind of got set aside before the election as to deal with the kicking the can down the road was, was Huawei and the 5G network, which is something this government is very likely going to have to deal with. So how do they approach that, given the, the current situation? Well, I can't help but uh, look at the timing of this decision. This is a few days after the uh, uh, Beijing's ambassador to Canada um, came, uh, was, was uh, swore in his credentials, and uh, mm-hmm. Dominic Barton started in Beijing. So I wonder if this is a, you know, if this is a certain volley of, of uh, them, of, of the Chinese government saying, look, um, you, there are things you need, there are things that we need, let's make some deals that we'll give out this first uh, goodwill gesture, I should say, goodwill gesture um, first because this is something that, uh, this was a ban that was hurting the Chinese uh, government. And so is the, uh, so is the canola thing. Um, there is a report from Bloomberg News a few weeks ago that uh, Canada's uh, exports, uh, canola exports to UAE, the United Arab Emirates, have uh, gone up by 500 percent. And that's all being bought, crushed there and being bought by the Chinese because they need the product. They're doing this to uh, apply leverage to Canada. Um, if, you know, and so they're lightening this leverage out of necessity in part, but also perhaps the timing suggests that they're uh, looking to uh, maybe sweeten the pot for uh, in terms of Huawei or other files. Francoise? It definitely helps to have an ambassador. Maybe it took a bit too long, but thank God we have it right now. Um, you've got an ex-ambassador, Saint-Jacques. I mean, you asked him uh, quite point blank, is, it, is there a little credit w- that we can give to the, the political side? And, and his answer was basically no, not yeah. one bit, not 1%, not maybe 15%, some diplomacy in, in, in play. I do think that uh, nothing happens for no reason, and you just don't take a decision just because the market, uh, let's say in Africa, because of the uh, of the uh, of the uh, flu and 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 their need for pork and beef, just made China turn around and say, "Oh, we've got Canada." Especially, they're they're very aware of what the situation between our two country uh, countries are uh, is. So, in in that aspect, I do I do say maybe not as much as we think, but I do think that there was a bit of, of, of politics. I hope that Canada didn't... Uh, maybe we'll see more in a few days. Did we give something in return for opening those markets? What's the situation with Huawei? Everybody is waiting for that 5, 5G uh, decision to, to come down. We know the states are really against it and, and, and saying to Canada, please don't do it. So we'll see how all this uh, plays out. But I do agree, sometimes a minority government is not the best time for this. And it's sad because we're still aiming for a seat on the Executive Council of the UN. There's so many things outside of Canada. I think that's highly Canada. in doubt. I, I, I'm um, not sure blackface helps maybe. with the African vote and things like yeah, that. You, know? you never know. But I, they're still going to spend, David, some money mm-hmm. to try to, to get it. They can't just put an X on it. It's something that they wanted for, for, for so long. But I'm just saying timing is everything in life, in politics even more. So we'll see. But Tiffany, uh, you know, as has been pointed out, this, the, the timing right now is there's kind of a squeeze of Canada caught between the U.S. and China on this, coming back in a weakened political situation in a minority government. Uh, and while this is good news for the Canadian economy, it may not be politically good news because there may not be any real credit there for it. So how do they move forward on China now, uh, given the changing circumstances here in Canada? 
I think it's just it's one step at a time, uh, uh, giving the power to uh, our ambassador to continue to, to leverage whatever it is that we, we have the power to leverage and, and, uh, and to, to do our best to uh, manage all of these very complex uh, uh, variables here. Are, um, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be tough moving forward, but, and, uh, but I would hope that uh, he'll put people in, in more leadership positions that understand this very well and, and can navigate it uh, moving forward. Melissa, is there leverage? I don't know if there's leverage, but there's, there's still no articulation of any kind of strategy on China or any kind of strategy on anything, on the, uh, frankly, on the global stage. And, and Francois brought up, uh, you know, the UN Security Council. There's no articulation of, uh, you know, of why Canada wants it, uh, what they would do there. Uh, frankly, there's just been a vacuum on, uh, on international affairs uh, aside from the USMCA, uh, you know, and that's going to come back to, to bite the government, uh, you know, no matter what they do. Yeah, Jason, that's really kind of the election of Trump and everything that came with it really kind of derailed, I think, some of their plans. Uh, you know, going back to our earlier conversation about cabinet is what does it do to Canada's voice internationally if Christian Freeland does say get moved to a domestic portfolio in, with circumstances like China still unresolved? It will be diminished. I mean, let's also remember that, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, there's still not a replacement for David McNaughton in uh, in Washington, either. I mean, this is a yeah. you know this is a this is a government that you know before the election and after the election is incredibly squeezed. Think about the Huawei uh, situation. If they uh, if they go ahead and placate China and or, you know and put at risk some of our security infrastructure mm -hmm. and uh, adopt uh, the the 5G, that's going to tick off uh, other countries in the security establishment, including including the United States. Um, if it does anything on uh, Meng Wanzhou, again that uh, that that violates a trust with the. United States. I mean, next year there's going to be a major election, going to be a presidential election. Um, you know, he's going to want to put somebody in there with, with some profile. He can't just leave that to the junior varsity or put in a, some, some obscure rookie minister. Um, but uh, he's going to have to sh also get, step up on the, his own and show some uh, strong, firm leadership uh, on the world stage himself. Yep, you're right. Still no ambassador to the U.S. There was talk it might be Katie Telfer, but we're learning now she's going to stay on as chief of staff in the prime minister's office. So a big vacancy to fill in D.C. Uh, thank you so much to the power panel. Tiffany Gooch, Melissa Lansman, Francoise Boivin, and Jason Markasoff. Thanks for your insight, folks. <laughs> Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.